Momentum. Mass in motion. When all goes downhill, momentum is easy to see. The uphill is a battle unless there's enough speed. Mass in motion. What if I suddenly stop? The moment is gone. Would I remain still forever, with no breeze inside to move me? A mass in motion. I am never not in motion. Even when I sit still, my mind spins. What if the speed depends on me? Up here or down, it all begins with me. A mess in motion. One moment sets it off. I'm more in control than I thought. The momentum is mine to build. The momentum is mine to break. Welcome to the Memento Mori Lab podcast. I'm Myra, your host and aspiring creative friend. You know, when you feel like you're on a roll, you do this one thing and it feels great, then you do another one, you get something right, you have a cool idea and it's like you keep moving forward like a trailblazer, like the best kind of trailblazer if there's such a thing. That's momentum. It's such an awesome feeling. I feel like a creative machine pumping out creativity or something. But momentum isn't always good. Sometimes it's like we're rolling downhill without brakes and no way of stopping and things just keep getting worse. Eventually something interrupts it or we hit rock bottom and we lose momentum and finally we stop rolling downhill. But it feels like forever until then. It's like that thing we used to do as kids, you know, with tires that you stick someone inside it and you roll them downhill or something. I never done that, I don't think, but I've seen it in movies, I guess. Everyone else was having fun, the kid inside a tire, not so much. The tire gets momentum and starts rolling faster and faster until it reaches the end of the hill, loses all momentum and falls to the side with the kids still stuck inside it. I thought this would be an interesting topic for the podcast because it seems to be something many creative people go through without even realizing it. I've experienced both kinds of momentum in my life and in my creative journey, metaphorically or physically. My cousins and I decided to take a stroll outside once on Christmas Eve And for some teenage reason, we decided to race each other back to the house. As I started to run, my shoes got caught up in my jeans hem, or whatever it's called, the end of the jeans. Instead of landing my next step on my foot, because it was stuck inside the pants, I landed on my knee. But the momentum was too strong for me to just stop on that first hit, so I flipped forward and rolled downhill. That fall resulted in scratches on my back, my hip and my knees. The knee I landed on took over three months to heal. All that to say that even when the momentum build seems short, the consequences can still impact us long after it's gone the quote-unquote good and the bad. I say that in quotes because I believe judging things as good or bad is too superficial and it makes us miss out on many nuances of the human experience. I've heard a guy say once when talking about personality traits and stuff, these things aren't good or bad, they just are. When we label something as bad, we dismiss it right away. We try to suppress it and to get over it. And sometimes that's necessary, sure, but other times the process is not that simple. Plus, if we look beyond it being good or bad, we can see what is there for us to learn. Sometimes if I like some artwork or illustration or whatever it is, I ask myself why do I like it, rather than just thinking, oh, that's good, or if I don't like something, like, oh, that's bad. 
Who am I to judge another person's work? And the same can be applied to our feelings, to our momentums, to our creative paths, to everything. I mean, I could go on a never-ending discussion on why I don't like when people reduce art or anything really to good or bad. It's just not that simple, but I won't do that here. At least not on this episode, <laughs> maybe in a future one. Alright, so considering building momentum, how can we harness that power to boost our creative process somehow? Is it possible? And how can we stop when we are going downhill? As always, with this podcast, I don't have concrete answers for you. Lately, I've tried a couple of things to build momentum in my creative process and they have worked for me. So I'm gonna share that, but if you're new to the podcast, my suggestion always is for you to try things out for yourself, take whatever you think helps and leave the rest. Sometimes we try to force ourselves into other people's molds and it will never fit. And by the way, sometimes just bringing the topic to life might make you consider ways you have already built momentum in the past. And that can be helpful by itself or ways you have stopped a downhill momentum. Awareness is in itself very powerful. Before we go any further, let's listen to another poem. Playground. It's just an empty playground. Broken seesaws, monkey bars and soulless swings. Lifeless dreams. I see the rusted chains and the scratched paint, buried in old sand, waving with the wind. It invites me in. I try but can't resist, so I sit, wrap my hands around the chains, push my feet against the sand, and stretch my legs forward. Back and forth I go. Each time I fly a bit higher, I feel the wind against my face. Maybe this time I'll go around the world, if I just get enough momentum. Just this one time, I wish I'd go all around the world. The thing about momentum is that it takes more energy at first and it starts slower, right? Back to the tire rolling downhill or me rolling down the street. The first few steps take a lot more effort and the speed is not there yet, which in the creative process can be frustrating. But when you know the first few steps will demand more energy, you can already prepare yourself for it. This concept can also motivate us to do things, like sometimes I just say to myself, if I can just start, it will get easier. What can I tell you? It works half the time. Recently, I was kind of feeling a bit unmotivated to work on my illustrations. I just felt like the ideas were meh and it wasn't exciting to me. But on the other hand, I was writing more and that was great. My first thought when I noticed that was maybe I couldn't focus on both and I had to choose one. I might throw up when I say this, but I thought maybe I need to choose a niche. <laughs> But no, I refuse. Memento Mori Lab is a reflection of my life and I live for expanding my creativity, not limiting it to one thing. Look, don't get me wrong. Some people do great with one thing and one niche and I wish I could do that too, but it's just not who I am. I've tried to do one thing, but I always get like sidetracked by another thing that I want to do, so... I've embraced it and now I do everything I want to do. On the other hand, don't get me started on this whole Instagram thing where you have to post similar things consistently or you lose followers or your grid will look bad. So I, if, I draw, if I draw only black and white stuff, I cannot post a colored painting because what people that follow me cannot look at a colored painting. I mean, 
Come on, aren't we all multidimensional humans with many sides and interests? But anyway, that's just my rant and my pet peeve with the whole social media ecosystem. To each their own, I guess. I still use it and I like it. It's just that for me annoys me a little bit. All right, back to momentum. I wanted to build momentum for my overall creativity, you know, writing different things and drawing and doing whatever else I wanted to do to explore my creativity. So then I listened to an audiobook called Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's an interesting book about building habits with actionable ways to do so. And I think it helped me find a way of building momentum in my writing and drawing. Whether the finished products are quote-unquote good, it's not the point. Building momentum requires goals, action, schedule, and consistency, at least in my recent experience. But not just every other day or every week. It has to be built daily. I was always the person that hated routine, but to be honest, it's been the best thing for my ADHD brain and for my life in general. So get ready to do something every day. No excuses. Whether you want to be a writer, painter, illustrator, artist, actor, musician, entrepreneur, whatever, the best way to build momentum is to practice it every day. That sounds obvious for some, impossible for most, I know. That's where goals can help or setting some parameters. We've talked about goals in the past, but I keep coming back to them in different ways because I do think they play an essential role in our creative path. What I did was, instead of creating a huge list of detailed goals with all this analytical stuff, I kept it simple. One of my goals is to write every day for at least 30 minutes. On most days, I focus on writing my main thing, which is a script writing project. Then, one or two days a week, I write poems, I write these episodes or random stuff. But all I have to do is write for 30 minutes a day. Not even writing. I can sit in front of the computer trying to write, no distractions at all. That counts too. I've been doing this for over a month. And not surprisingly, what started as 30 minutes now is usually more than an hour. Sometimes it could be even more, but you know, I need to get other things done. And I do feel like the more I do that, the easier it is for me to get in the zone after I start writing, you know, like I don't struggle as much. So that's interesting too. That's, I think that's a, a result of momentum as well. The other goal is to draw every day. I don't have any time set, but I have to know already what I want to draw before I face the blank page. Oh, right, because I was not liking my ideas, I decided to come up with new ideas every day. That was my third goal. Every night before I go to sleep, I write down in my phone three to five ideas of things I could draw. I don't judge the ideas, I just write whatever. The first days were horrible and it took me forever. But remember, the beginning requires more effort. Now after doing this every day for 30 days, the ideas just come. Sometimes even more than five. And it's automatic. Like I lie down, I grab my phone, write down the ideas, you know. Now let me be honest, most of the ideas in that list are garbage. But I can always find some ideas that get me excited to draw or that lead to another idea. So I put those aside on another list and I'm all set to draw every day. Some drawings take more than a day, obviously, but it doesn't matter as long as I come to the page knowing what I'll work on. I find that this removes a lot of friction when it comes to creativity and momentum, just like it does when building new habits. The last goal I created was a way of holding myself accountable to my drawing practice and it was to post something on Instagram every day. I find it funny to call it drawing practice because it's not like I'm studying things, you know, it's just silly drawings, but anyway, that's irrelevant. Some days I didn't have a finished drawing, so I posted like a sketch. 
sometimes I wasn't entirely happy with what I posted, but that's all just a good practice for taking action, moving forward and building momentum. To keep track of these things, I have a spreadsheet with the goals list and every day of the month. So every day I have to cross off the activity. Now it has a massive chain of access and I don't want to break that chain. You can start it on any date. You just write the date that you're starting and then you go, you keep crossing the access day after day, you know. Like for me, the first line is write and then the second one draw and then post on IG and ideas before bed. So I keep on crossing those every day. I think this also drives us to take some kind of action no matter what. On the days that I'm not as inspired, the fact that I still show up to the page means something. You know, our brains register that kind of behavior and learns from it. And also sometimes, I'll be honest, I just do it so that I can cross it off. But still, like, I'm learning to do the things that I want to do in the macro, even when I don't really feel like in that particular five minutes of my life, you know? And our brain learns from that kind of action. In my experience, another key concept to creating momentum is to schedule things. This was also something I picked up from the Atomic Habits book. The author says that scheduling can be the difference between something sticking or not. How I apply that is on weekdays, I write as soon as I finish work. I give myself some time to get a snack or something, but then I sit at my desk and focus solely on working for at least 30 minutes. And I always already know what I need to work on. I've decided it earlier, so I just sit and try my best to write it. We don't need to wait for inspiration to strike to create things. We need a process. We need to build momentum. There's a fantastic illustrator called Christoph Niemann. His IG is Abstract Sunday. He always talks about his process and that sometimes there's no inspiration or big aha moments behind his creations. On one of his recent posts, he wrote, quote, There was no big aha moment. Every step of the process consisted of benign and timid decisions. End quote. By the way, the next episode will be about our choices in the creative process, so stay tuned for that one. Back to the schedule. Drawing is after dinner and the ideas I write before bed. The IG posting varies depending on whether I have something ready or not, but as long as it's before midnight, I'm good. Does all of that make any sense? I think this whole concept can also help when we are rolling downhill and we want to stop that quote-unquote bad momentum. We can try and switch gears, set these goals and begin moving in another direction. We need to interrupt it somehow and a change in our actions usually works. Other times we have to roll it out and know that it will eventually pass. Like I mentioned before, just having an awareness of what's happening and considering that everything is temporary, can be our saving grace. The creative journey is wild, but building momentum is crucial if we want to make the most of it. What is your creative goal going to be? I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode, so hit me up on Instagram at memento.mori.lab and let's chat. I hope you found this episode helpful and that You give it a try, set your simple goals, focus on taking action, create a little schedule and remain consistent for at least 30 days. Anyone can do anything for 30 days. I mean, that's how this podcast started. It was meant to be a 30-day challenge to myself. And now it's been here for eight months. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey. I appreciate the support. And I hope you have a fantastic day and go build momentum. Thanks for hanging around to the end. See ya.